Oh, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. God is good all the time. God is good. He is worthy to be praised. We're so glad to see you here today. We're so glad for those here in the sanctuary to see you and those that are tuning in online. We're so glad that you tuned in. We're so glad that you're here. God is awesome. God is going to do great things. Are you in believing it today? Do you believe that God is going to do great things today? Amen? Amen. We want to welcome you here to Crossroads Covenant Church, where God loves connects with your life. I am Reverend Stevenson, and I am so glad and so happy to see you here today. We got an uh, awesome service prepared today, and we're just going to let God have his way in this place on today. Amen? Amen. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and bless you today. We honor you and we adore you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We give you all praise, God, because you alone are worthy of the praise, God. We bless your holy name, God. We just pray, Father God, that you will have your way today. Bless our service today. Bless our time today, Lord God. Uh, bless our pastor, Lord God, as he preach your word with power and authority, God. Use him like never before, God. Have your way. Touch the hearts of your people today, God. Touch those that do not know you, oh God. That they may ask, what must I do to be saved, God? Have your way in this place and all over the world, God. As we worship you today. As we give you all praise today, God, fill us with your spirit. Yes, God. Fill us with your touch, God. Yes, God. As we give you praise, God, and worship you because you are good. Yes, you and are. you are so good to yes. us, God. And we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please welcome our worship leader for today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wherever you are, why don't you stand to your feet and declare how good God is. I'm going to remind you, we're going to sing praises to him because he is good. And he's been so, so good to me. And I know he's been good to you. So think about maybe just one thing that you can praise God for. Just one thing where you've seen the goodness of God. Just one episode where you've seen God come through and you say, God, you are good. We want to remind ourselves of just how good God is. Yes, sometimes we wait for him and we have to wait and wait and wait. But we wait patiently for the Lord because he inclines his ear to us. He hears us and he comes to us. He delivers us. That's the God we serve this morning. And I just want us all to sing of how good he is. So listen, here we go. I waited patiently upon the Lord. And heard my cry. cry. He pulled me up out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock. And he gave me beauty for ashes and joy for my morning and praise for heaviness. He put a new song in my mouth and a, a crown upon my head. He gave me life forevermore he's been so good so so good to me so good so so good to me so good so so good to me jesus been so good so so good to me so good so so good to me so good so so good to me jesus let's sing it again i waited patiently upon the lord upon a rock he gave me beauty for ashes and joy for my morning and praise for heaviness he put a new song in my mouth and a crown upon my head he gave me life forevermore he's been so good so so good to me so good so so good to me so good to me, Jesus, he's been so good, so, so good 
to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. Jesus, oh, he's been so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. Jesus, he's been so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. Jesus, listen. He picked me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground. What do you say? Hallelujah, hallelujah. He picked me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, he picked me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, he me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground hallelujah oh he's been so good so so good to me so good so so good to me so good so so good to me jesus you've been so good so so good to me so good so so good to me so good so so good to me jesus I've got love, joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh yeah. Now I've got love, joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Sing it with me. You've got love, joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, he's been so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me, Jesus. He's been so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me, Jesus. You've been so good, so, so good to me. So good. So, so good to me, so good, so, so good to me, Jesus, you've been so good, so, so good to me, so good, so, so good to me, so good, so, so good to me, Jesus. Think about it. Give him a hand clap of praise for how good he's been. You remember what time when you were down and you needed to be picked up? was nobody around to pick you up. You had to pick yourself up. Well, actually, it was God who picked you up. It was God who turned you around. It was God who set your feet on solid ground. And he gave you love and joy and peace and righteousness all in the Holy Spirit. Oh, he's been so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. Me, Jesus, thank you. You've been so good, so so good to me. So good, so so good to me. So good, so so good to me, Jesus. You've been so good, so so good to me. So good, so so good to me. So good, so so good to me, Jesus. You've been so good, so so good to me. So good, so so good to me. So good, so so good to me, Jesus. A great big hand clap of praise and shout hallelujah and thank you because he's been good to you I know he's been good to me I know he's been good to you I'm gonna invite you to sit just have a seat now as we reflect on how good God has been you know sometimes you just need somebody to remind you of how good God has been how faithful he's been good yeah he did pick me up yeah he did turned my uh, mourning into dancing. He gave me joy in place of sorrow. He did give me peace. He, gave, he gives me hope. Even in the stuff that's going on now, I still have a hope that God is God. And I still have the truth that God is God. And there's no one like him. He's been faithful. He's been faithful for years. He's been faithful for decades. 
He's been faithful all of our lives. Do you know that? Just the fact that you can even open your eyes and breathe a breath of air speaks to the faithfulness of God who always provides the breath that you need. So I'm going to invite you to do whatever you need to do to get into a quiet place in your heart and in your mind and just remember how faithful God has been. If you want to, you can sing along with me, but my heart's desire now is to just sing this so that you can be reminded and I can be reminded of the faithfulness of God. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shame. you God for your faithfulness thank you God that morning by morning you show us new mercies and you remind us that all we need you provide thank you for your faithfulness to us great God we love you 
we thank you and bless you for your faithfulness. And we pray this, offering this prayer and this praise to you in Jesus' name. Amen. brothers and sisters, as we prepare our hearts and minds to partake in communion today, for those of you who are watching us online, if you have not had an opportunity to get your elements, the bread and the wine, please do so at this time. We serve a faithful and awesome God that can do anything but fail. Yes, yes. We serve a mighty God who loved us oh so much that he was willing to lay down his life for yes. you and I. Yes, and that alone we are thankful for. Yes. We're so thankful to God that he loved us because he had the power to come down but he decided to die for you and I. Our God is faithful, and there's nothing like the hymns of the church to remind us how good and faithful God is, the one that we serve. We don't want to take it for granted that we wake up every day with the activities of our limbs. We don't want to take it for granted that we're able to breathe on our own without being plugged up to a machine. We don't want to take it for granted that we're able to come out, even in a pandemic, to come and worship him. We don't want to take it for granted. We serve a mighty, mighty, mighty good God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are good and faithful to us. We thank you, O oh God. We ask that you will bless these elements, O oh God, as they symbolize your body and your blood, God. We thank you, O oh God, for laying down your life for us, shedding your blood for our sins, God. We thank you, God, that you loved us oh so much that you were willing to die for us. We thank you, God. Now we ask that you would just touch right now this precious moment. Touch our minds and our hearts that we may be focused on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand with me. On the night that Jesus sat with his disciples, he took the bread after giving thanks for it, he blessed it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. The same night, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents the new covenant of my blood, my blood that was shed for you because I love you oh so much. I shed my blood for your remissions of sin. My brothers and sisters, he loves us. He loves you, and he loves me. And we thank you, God. He said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death, my burial, and my resurrection. My brothers and sisters, we as believers know that he is coming back again. Amen. Let's drink together. Will you please join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. My brothers and sisters, please welcome our senior pastor, Reverend Joseph Rashid. Good morning. Praise God. We're so glad to be here today. Let's start by giving the Lord a great big hand praise wherever you are. All right, all right, all right. You know, uh, yesterday, uh, my wife and I, we had our vaccine, our dose one of the vaccine, and it was an experience that uh, I felt like, well, first I wasn't going to do it, but we did. And with this pandemic, the way that it is, and with all the fear, I think we have to stand up sometime and say, I'm going to fight against this fear. And so we did yesterday. And it was a very, very enjoyable experience. But while we were there, we had a chance to minister to several people. You know, God doesn't ever send you any place for you just to get something, but he always sends you to deliver what you have. Amen? So I want to encourage all of you, uh, that if you have not, and if you have the opportunity, uh, don't fight uh, against it. Uh, follow your heart and trust your physicians. And if you get the vaccine, get the vaccine and say, okay, I'm going to make this step in the direction of my own health. Amen? Amen. Amen. So today we're starting, we've ended our series, All Things New, but I want to uh, preach today about something that may be new. It may be new, but um, it's in John. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And I'd like for you to go with me to John chapter 12, and uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 7, and I'm going to read them out loud, and I want you for you to, to read along. Now, if you don't have a Bible, if you don't have a device where you can find the scripture, write it down. John 12. One through seven. Just write it down and read it later. You'll find it there. This is the word of the Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in his honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples... Judas Iscariot, who would later betray him, objected. Oh, that's Judas for you. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He, uh, as keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it embezzlement. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. And I want to stop right there. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. I want to stop right there. John chapter 12, verse 1 through 7. Would you bow your heads and pray with me, please? Father, we ask that you will bless us today and that you will guide us, that you will keep us. We pray, God, that you will be glorified today. Let your word be clear and speak through me as you moved today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Top priority is what I'm talking about. You may take your seats. You may take your seats wherever you are. Take your seats, please. Top priority, that's what I'm talking about. And I want to also encourage you today, if you have a journal or something like that that you write in, find your journal and, and, and pull it out and make some notes as we go along today because 
I'm going to talk to you about something that's very, very important. Priority is something that's above the normal, but your top priority is that thing that exceeds all those other things that you have considered as important. Today I want to talk to you about making Jesus your top priority. Making Jesus your top priority. I want to encourage you to make Jesus your top priority. I want to encourage you to make Jesus your top priority. I want to encourage you, make Jesus your top priority. Now, many times we say, how can I do that? Do I do it by going to church? How do I do that? I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. How do I do that? Well, there are three things that we're going to find out in this text today that will help you to make Jesus your top priority. Making him your top priority is very, very important as we talk about living and living life. Making him your top priority. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, here we go. The setting was already set. Jesus has traveled to Bethany. Lazarus was there six days before the Passover means Jesus was getting ready to be crucified. And we don't know whose house he was in. We know that Bethany was the city that Lazarus lived in. It could have been Lazarus' father's house because in Mark chapter 14, it's talking about Simon the leper. So that could have been a relative of Lazarus. But we do know that that's where Jesus was, in Bethany. That's the setting. So how do we make him our top priority? Well, number one, by seeking his presence. By seeking his presence. By seeking his presence. Please notice in the text in verse 2, the Bible is very clear about what Martha is doing. When we read about Mary and Martha, we always see them in paradox to one another. They're in opposites to one another. Mary is always sitting at his feet, but Martha is always serving. Martha is serving. Martha is serving in the Lord's presence. It was the right thing to do. It was a good thing to do. You know, uh, many times people, as they seek the Lord, they talk about it's the right thing to do. It's just the right thing to do. It's the best thing to do for the right time. That means that's something that you're good at. Martha was good at fixing meals. Martha was good at serving meals. Martha was good at doing whatever it took for the meal. So it was the right thing to do for Martha. It was the right thing to do for Martha. It was the right thing to do for her to serve. Sometimes we look at there's nothing else to do. In this pandemic, there's nothing else to do. I might as well go to church. Uh, Everything else is shut down. My bar is shut down. My club is shut down. I can't get together with people. I might as well go to church. It's the only thing to do. You know, the disciples had that attitude. When Jesus said to them, he said, "Um, will you leave me also? They said, where else can we go? We've left our home. We've left our jobs. We don't have any place else to go. You're the best thing going right now. There's nothing else to do. So we must stay in your presence. We must stay in your presence, not because it's right, but it's the only thing that we can do. We can't go nowhere else. But Mary, Mary thought it was the best thing to do. Mary looked at it as, this is the best thing to do is to be in his presence, to find out where he is and to go where he is. You see, we don't understand that logic in what Mary was saying. In a meal, in a banquet, in any time the men gathered, women were not accepted. They were not welcome. But Mary said, he's in there. I'm around him. I'm close to him, but I want to be near him. So she sought his presence in a place that she wasn't invited. And she went into his presence because that was the best thing to do. The top priority was let me be in his presence because there I learn, there I see, there I I understand. I want to be in his presence. I don't want to just go and just serve. I, I want to be in his presence. 
Many of you have been to a restaurant. Been to a restaurant lately? Probably not, but many of you, you've been to a restaurant, right? 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 Okay. Now, when you go to a restaurant, how many of you, when the server comes to your table, they sit down at your table, have a conversation with you. When your food comes, they eat with you. That doesn't happen. They're a server. They come and they take your order. They leave and they get your order. They bring it back. They check on you. Are you okay? They're not really in your presence. Mary said, I don't want to be a server. I don't want to be one who just occasionally checks in. Mary said, I don't want to just stop in every now and then. I don't want to take the order, but I want to be in his presence. Mary said, I want to find out where he is, and I want to absorb every bit of information that I can. I just want to be in his presence. So when you want to make Jesus your top priority, the first thing that you have to do is seek his presence. Find out where he is and be there with him. That's your top priority. The second thing that you could do is select his praise. Selecting his praise is very, very important. Please note, this is very, very um, intentional in the Bible. The Bible says in verse 2, Martha served. But in verse 3, it says, then. Do you see that? In verse 2, Martha was serving. But then, Mary. Mary enters the room, but she's bringing something. Y'all stay with me now. Mary came into the room. She entered his presence with a jar of expensive perfume. This was the alabaster jar. Many times we say, okay, the alabaster made it special. No, it was special because of what was inside of it. Alabaster was very common in the day. It was special because of what was inside of it, a very, very expensive perfume. This perfume was very, very expensive, and, 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 and she enters with her best. By selecting his praise, you got to know I am bringing you my best. By selecting his praise, you got to reach up on the shelf and say, should I give him this Walmart brand or should I get the Givenchy? Should I give him my best praise? I don't want to give him a Cain offering. I want to give him an Abel offering. I want him to have the best because he deserves the best. I want to give him my best praise. I want to bring my best praise to him. See, many times we praise the Lord because we want something. Lord, I want you to bless me with a, let me praise you. Lord, I want you to give me a, Lord, I, I need you to do this. Lord, I need you to go to the hospital and help my, no, no, no. Sometimes you just got to praise him because of who he is. Sometimes you just got to praise him because uh, he is wonderful, because he is marvelous, because he was glorious, because he's compassionate, because he's loving, because he's faithful. Sometimes you just got to select your best praise for him. Sometimes, even when you come into the atmosphere of the saints, sometimes you don't come with your best praise. Sometimes you're affected by your attitude. You got stopped in traffic. Police pull you over. Somebody was driving too slow and made you late. You got all this stuff going on, so you don't come in with your best praise. You come in with a praise. You come in with your broken hallelujah. <laughs> but you don't come in with your best praise. You don't bring it in the door. You kind of wait for it to catch up with you. If church is good, I'll be good. But no, 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 no. You got to select your best praise. You got to bring it when you come. You got to have it in your mind. I'm going to praise the Lord regardless. I'm going to give him my best. I'm going to give him my best. You got to bring something. Please notice what she does. In verse 3, she pours it out on his feet. She pours all of it out on his feet. Okay, this is her praise. She brings her praise, and she pours it all out. She don't save a little bit. I'm going to save a little bit for next week. 
I'm going to save a little bit for tomorrow. No, she pours it all out. She empties the best on his feet. He's reclining at the table so it was easy to get to his feet, but he's reclining with a bunch of other men. She don't come in and say, let me drip a little bit on you too so you won't feel left out. Let me give you a little bit. No, she pours it all on him. He is the focus of her praise. And she pours it all on his feet. She pours it all out. We got to be prepared. We got to be ready to not only select our praise, but to pour it all out. All the sorrow, all the joy, all the agony, all the pain, all the relief. We got to pour it all out on Jesus. Pour it all out. That's how you make him your top priority. I had this conversation with my wife. We first got married. Actually, it was before we got married. My aunt was very ill, and my aunt was so ill that I had to go and check on her every week. This was, this was one of my aunts in California. And so this particular day, I called her from the payphone. That's when you had payphone booths. I called her from the payphone. It only cost a dime. And so I called her, but she wasn't at home. So normally, if she wasn't at home, she was at the hospital. So I called her at the hospital. She wasn't at the hospital. So I called my mother to ask where is she? Because she's not at home and she's not at the hospital. My mother said, she's dead. I came out of the phone booth. I was stunned. My wife was standing this way. I turned this way. And I began to walk away from my wife. Are y'all hearing me? Instead of me going towards her, I turned away from her. Are y'all still listening? You see, many times we come to the Lord, there's something that's affecting us, but we don't pour it all out on him. We hold a little bit. We turn away from him. And thinking that we're doing something good and righteous, God can't deal with this. But that's when you really love him. That's when you really praise him. When you tell him, Lord, this is where I am. This is what I need. This is who you are to me. You're my comforter. You're my consoler. You're my everything. Bring him your best. Bring him your best. And your best is not always the best song. As a matter of fact, it might not be a song at all. Please note there are three types of praise right here. You ready? The first one is praise is not always loud. Sometimes there's the silent praise. See, when you pour the oil out, that doesn't make any noise. Oil is quiet. It's thick and slow. It don't make any noise. As it hits the feet, it doesn't make any noise. Sometimes it's the silent praise. Sometimes as you're meditating, as you're contemplating, as you're thinking about who he is and how wonderful he is to you, that silent praise is touching his feet. It's not always, yeah, I love him, yeah, yeah. No, that's not always it. Sometimes it's the silent praise. In the midnight hour, when you're laying in the bed, it's the silent praise. It's, it's that praise that doesn't wake anybody up. It's that praise that's not running around the building. It's that silent praise. You got to select your best praise. Then there's the humble praise. Please note in verse 3, she wipes his feet with her hair. That's humility. Humility. Because the hair is the woman's glory. And women didn't wear their hair down because that was a sign of being a wild woman. But here it is that she says, I don't care what you think about me. I'm going to be humble enough to kneel down, humble, and wipe his feet with my hair. There's a humble praise. So you got a silent praise, then you have a humble praise. Humble praise doesn't go out and tell, well, you know, I really praised him today. <laughs> you just lost it. <laughs> Humble praise is not bragging about it. Anytime you do something good for somebody, we really shouldn't brag about it. But when you're praising God, that's... When I say praise, I don't mean in the church either. I don't mean let's give him a big hand clap either. I mean praise is whatever you do that's good that gives God glory. That's what I mean by praise. The last one is the transforming praise. The transforming praise. 
Please look at verse 3. They're all in the room. Jesus is reclining. It's a bunch of men with smelly feet. <laughs> it's a bunch of men who've been walking for a long way. They're reclining at the table, and they got smelly feet. The room was filled with the aroma of food that's cooked, smelly men with smelly feet. <laughs> Many of you have been in Eastern situations and you've been around odors that you're not used to and uh, deodorants aren't very, very, um, uh, uh, very popular. And, and so you can smell some, you say, ooh, what's going on over here? That's what was going on this, in this text. These men, all grouped together, sitting around the table, had different odors. Different odors about them. Their feet had different odors. <laughs> but when the Bible says, when Mary came in, her selected praise, that she poured her praise out on his feet. Then the whole house, not just his feet, but the whole house, the whole house, not just the room that they were in, but the whole house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. See, your praise will change the atmosphere. Your praise will affect the atmosphere. Your praise will change it from being bitter to sweet, from being ugly to kind. Your, your praise will change the atmosphere. Some of us maybe need to go home and get a little praise on because maybe we need some home change. Maybe we need some work change. Maybe you need some change in your neighborhood. Start to praise the Lord. Make him your top priority and watch the atmosphere change. Watch it change. When my children were very little, we didn't allow them to fight and call one another names, but they could bicker. They could go back and forth and they could bicker. One day, my, my, my wife was sitting, we were sitting downstairs and she said, you know, you ought to do something about them kids. You ought to do something about your kids. That's what she really said. Because they were my kids as long as they was acting up. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I mean. So, <clears throat> so he said, you need to do something about your kids. They upstairs, they're making all that noise, they're bickering back and forth. You need to do something about those kids. I want you to go upstairs and I want you to deal with them. But I didn't do that. I listened to my wife and I went to the piano. We had a piano in our house. I went to the piano and I began to pray to play praise songs. Y'all not, not uh, with me right now. As I began to play these praise songs, pretty soon the bickering stopped. And the kids came downstairs one by one. Then they did something that was kind of shocking. They joined hands with one another, stood around the piano, and started singing. They were singing, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. They started singing, Jesus in you, it loves the Jesus in me. They started singing the songs of praise because praise will change the atmosphere. Praise will change the atmosphere, but you got to select your best and bring your best to Jesus and allow him him to transform the room. It's transforming. The last thing, very last thing is the first as, as, as we were talking, first thing you want to do is you want to seek his presence. The second thing you want to select your praise, but the last thing you want to do is stand in his protection. You want to stand in his protection. To make him your priority is to stand in your protection. It's to stand in his protection. I'm sorry, to stand in his protection. In verse 4, the Bible says, Judas objected. Now, whenever we read Judas in the Bible, we get a little tinge in our heart. You know, it's like, Judas. <sighs> We don't even name our dog Judas, you know, because he betrayed Christ, right? And so it mentions that Judas, who was later to betray him, objected. 
he objected. He objected to the praise. Judas wasn't praising, but he objected to Mary's praise. Judas wasn't bringing anything, but he objected because she brought everything. Judas objected. Judas represents the world. You know, the world objects when the saints get together and begin to praise God. The world says, it don't take all that. It don't take all that. You ain't got to always praise God when people ask you, how did you get through this? You ain't got to say, well, God delivered me. God brought me through. Yeah, it don't take all that. But you can't tell me what it takes. See, you wasn't there when I was crying all night long. You wasn't there when I was out there raggedy and shameless. You wasn't there when, my, when I was down in the mud and I was sinking deeper and deeper. You was not there when he picked me up. You was not there when he scrubbed me clean. You was not there when he rescued me. It takes all of that and more. The old song says, you don't know like I know what he done for me. You, don't, you can't tell it like I can. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. You don't know what I know. He's done great things for me. I said he's done great things for me. I said he's done great things for me. Yes, he picked me up and he turned me around. Yes, he placed my feet on solid ground. And yes, I stand and I say, hallelujah, glory to the king of kings, wonderful savior and Lord. You don't know. You don't know. And sometimes Judas represents the ain'ts. Not the saints, but the ain'ts. Ain'ts are those people who have a religiosity that condemns your praise. That's what an ain't is. Okay, let me, let, me, let me put it to you like this. You know, when Jesus was having the identity complex, when he said, who do men say that I am? Who, what are they saying about me? I want to know. That's an identity complex. When Jesus was going through that crisis and he asked his disciples... They said, well, some say that you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah the prophet. Some say this, some say that. He said, but who do you say that I am? You know, Peter stood up. He said, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. What a great commendation to be called the son of God, to be said that God has revealed. What a great commendation that is from Jesus Christ. And then he said, but I'm getting ready to leave you. And Peter said, now hold on now, just a minute. And Peter rebuked him. And Jesus looked at him and said, get behind me. Satan. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? At one moment, he was Peter. God has revealed this to you. The next moment is, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> you see, every time you try to do something good, especially for the Lord, you have to expect criticism to follow. You have to expect that it's on the way, but you got to not focus on that. You have to keep him your top priority and keep standing in his protection. Please note this. You don't have to stand up and fight. You ain't got to meet nobody in the parking lot. You don't have to put any Vaseline on your face, take your earrings off. All you have to do is stand in his protection because he will fight for you. Exodus 14, 14. You need to be still. I will fight for you. You ain't got to defend yourself. Stand up and try to make yourself right. All you got to do is just keep living. Keep loving and keep laughing. God will defend you. You ain't got to stand up and do anything like that. You ain't got to prove yourself to anybody. God says, I will be your shield. I will be your rear guard because you have my protection. What did Jesus say? In verse 7, he stood up, he said, leave her alone. Leave her alone. Y'all aren't catching that. As she was being objected to God said leave her alone Mary didn't say oh you don't know what I'm doing he said leave 
her alone. Y'all still don't get it. What he said was, leave her alone. You talk to my hand, my mighty powerful hand. You don't have to deal with her. She's praising me. Y'all still ain't with me. He said, because of her praise, because she has made me the priority, I have made her my source, my source of protection. I'm going to protect her because she's seeking my presence, because she's selected her praise. The Bible says this, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. What does that mean? That means this, that the enemy, with all of his objections, with all of his oppositions to your praise, when he comes in and begins to try to fill your mind, when he begins to try to fill your heart, when he begins to try to pull you down, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. A standard is a wall. It's a, a strong fortress. It says that he will raise up this standard, and the enemy will not be able to break that standard. <laughs> the Bible says this. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Why? Because no weapon formed against you. Let me hear it. Let me see. No weapon formed against you as long as you praise him. No weapon formed against you. It's formed, it's designed, it's devising to take you out. No weapon formed against you will prosper. It won't work. I don't care what they say. It won't work. I don't care how many Bible verses they quote. It won't work because you got a protector. Stay in his protection. Stay right there. Don't worry about what people say. They ain't got nothing to say about you anyway. You was talking to God. You wasn't messing with them. Whatever you're doing, you're doing it for God. No weapon formed against you will prosper because the Lord is faithful. The Lord will establish you and guard you from the evil one. We used to have a dog. Our dog was a guard dog. We had him in the backyard. If anyone came around our house, our dog was always on the prowl, especially at nighttime. Stay with me now. At nighttime, our dog would go over here if he heard a noise over here. He would run back there if he heard a noise back there. Our dog was guarding his family. Oh, y'all not praying with me right now. Our guard was on, our dog was on duty all night long. We slept, but our dog was on duty. We was in our bed, but our dog was on duty. And as long as that dog was there, we didn't have nothing to worry about because the dog was guarding us. He was our protector. Now, please note this. We had a very smart dog. Our dog didn't just bark. He would just kind of sit there. If you came in the gate, you was cool. But it was getting out the gate. You could come in and he'd sit there. You would think he was okay. But when you got ready to leave, that's when he would raise up. And he would defend his family. God says, I guard you. I watch over you. You lay down and slumber all night. I guard you. I watch over you. If I hear a noise over here, I'm over there. If I hear it back there, I'm back there because I'm protecting you. You belong to me. I've purchased you with my own blood. And because you belong to me, I have, to, I have the privilege to guard you from all evil. Nothing can come in. Nothing can harm you. So just stay in that protection. Here's something else. In your home, you're protected. Once you leave home, you're not protected. You're susceptible to all of the outside influences. God says, but he who abides in the shelter. Somebody pray with me now. He who abides. He who makes me his dwelling place. If you abide with me, hey, if you stay with me, come on now. If you live with me, come on now. I will protect you against all harm. You don't have to worry about what anybody has to say. Just stay in my protection. Just stay in my protection. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Top priority. Make Jesus your top priority. 
Make him your top priority. It's a choice. And I want to encourage you to make Jesus your top priority. Above all life, above all your ambitions, above all your goals, make Jesus your top priority. Whether you're working on a job, make him your top priority. Serve him. What, what, whether you're going to school, serve him. Make him your top priority. How do you do it? By seeking his presence. By selecting his praise. But most of all, by standing in his protection. He'll watch over you. Let's give the Lord a great big hand praise. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we pray for those who have heard your word. We ask God for you to bless us, for you to guide us, for you to keep us. Strengthen us, God, that we may be the Marys, not the Marthas, coming into your presence, bringing you our best praise, and always being uh, watchful for your protection. Keep us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. My brothers and sisters, what an awesome word today. Top priority. If you have not made Jesus Christ your top priority, now is the time. And you ask, how can I do this? By simply joining me in this prayer. Just pray with me right now. Dear Jesus, I love you. I am a sinner. I believe in my heart that you died for me. And I believe that you rose with all power in your hand. Please come into my heart now. I love you. Amen. If you have said that simple prayer, we ask that you will contact us on our website at crossroadscub.tv and let us know that you have said that prayer. Also, if you're looking for a church home, we ask that you would check us out on our our, our website as well, crossroadscove.tv slash I'm new and click the visitor slot and then someone will contact you. If you're looking for a church home, we invite you to come and join us here at Crossroads Covenant Church because we're starting our new members orientation class starting in February. So please check our social medias, our Facebook, Instagram, and our website for more information on that. And if you are in need of prayer, like we all are in need of prayer, everybody needs prayer. But if you have a, 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 a real need, a, a, a real prayer request that, that needs to get out that you want us to pray with you and for you about, please check our website and submit your prayer requests on there as well. And someone will email you back and let you know that we as a church body are praying with you and for you. Amen? Amen. Prayer changes things. We also invite you to join us for our Bible study on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Please and join And learn more about the Word of God. Also, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We cannot thank you enough for your generous gifts that you have given to Crossroads. It's because of you that we're able to continue our ministry here. And we thank you for that. And if you have not had the opportunity today to submit your gifts, there are three ways for you to submit your gifts to Crossroads. You can text any amount to 84321. We will receive it that way. If you want to give online, you can do that as well at crossroadscove.tv slash give. Or you can mail us a check here at Crossroads Covenant Church, 647 East Pleasant Run in DeSoto, Texas, 75115. We're thank you, thankful again for you to be here, and we thank you for joining in with us. Now, as our worship leader comes and gives us our Aaron's blessing, we praise to hope that God will be with you this week. Would you please stand wherever you are and extend your hands this way? I'm going to offer you the blessing. I'm going to say it first, and then you can turn to a neighbor, uh, wherever you are, virtually, and offer that same blessing to your community, to your neighbors, and your friends. May the Lord bless you.
and keep you may the lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you May the Lord lift his countenance on you. May the Lord lift his countenance on you. And may he keep you in prayer. closing prayer. Father, we thank you and bless you. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you do. We thank you, O oh God, that you love us more than we love ourselves. We thank you, O oh God, that we have the opportunity to make you our top priority, God. Now, as we leave this place, Lord God, be with us and keep us. Protect us, Lord God, from hurt, harm, and danger until we meet at our next appointed time. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen.